come to Children's Liturgy of the Word. My name is Tish. This is my husband, Mike. Hello, and today we have a special message for you. Uh, for anyone listening, uh, those are parents and or uh, the young ones who follow us. Uh, it will looks like uh, we'll be moving, okay? So we're going to need to take a little vacation break uh, from Liturgy of the Word. So it will probably be during the summer. This will probably be the last one we record for now. We'll do our move, and then we'll record from there and send it here, okay? So we will continue. Uh, it's uh, just that we need a little break in order to move all our stuff over there. Looks like we'll be going to New York, okay? To see our grandchildren and help them out, okay? So uh, we'll have a little break there. So uh, don't panic, okay? Uh, that's why we wanna let you know ahead of time this is what's going to happen, okay? And then any time during the break, if anybody catches on, they'll see this message, hopefully, and know, oops, they're on break, and we're coming back later, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll start with the prayer of the day. God, you speak to us through Jesus, your Son. You do not let us ignore what he has to say, nor think what we know better than he. Instead, open our ears to his voice and open our hearts to his love so that we may live as brothers and sisters of Jesus who is with you forever and ever. Amen. Okay. The first reading is in the Old Testament. And it's a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Spirit came to me, and I heard God say, I am sending you to speak to my people. They are stubborn and have turned away from me. But I'm sending you to turn them, and you will say, Your God is speaking to you. And whether they accept you or not, remember they are stubborn people. They will know that a real prophet has come to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, now we'll do the response, okay? Here I am. Here I am. Oh my God. Oh my God. I come to do your will. I come to do your will. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel affirmation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. We believe, we believe. We believe, we believe. Lord, help our unbelief. Lord, help our unbelief. Very good. Very good. And the gospel. The gospel is in the New Testament. It's the good news, and it's the gospel from Mark. So for the gospel, what do we do? That's right. We stand up out of reverence and honor. Then we make the sign of the cross how many times? Correct, three times. So over our forehead, we go up and down and then across. Remember, we do that because we're asking the Lord, in a sense, to open our minds to understand what's being read. But sometimes it's hard. Then over our lips, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember to be. No. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember what we hear. So we might get the chance to tell someone else what we've heard, and they might not know yet. Then over our hearts, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember to be more friendly and neighborly to everyone we meet this week. Now we listen to the gospel. Jesus went to his hometown, and his disciples went with him. On the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue to teach. The people there were amazed at everything he said. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom? And how is he able to, to do the miracles he does? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary? Isn't he the brother of James and Ju Joseph and Judas and Simon? And don't his sisters live right here in our town? 
They just could not accept Jesus for who he really was. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are always honored by everyone except their own people, especially in their own hometown. And Jesus could not do many miracles there, except heal a few people by laying hands on them. He was surprised how hard it was for them to believe, and he went to teach in other towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who we'll never see right where you are. Okay, I'm going to explain the first reading, and Michael's going to explain the Gospel, okay? And the prophet Ezekiel, okay, he's a messenger of God, okay? He said to us, the people, what God told him to say. And he said the Spirit came to him. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, came to him and told him what to say. That's how God works, you know? And so here he's filled with the Spirit, but the people are stubborn. Do you know what a stubborn is? Do you know how to be stubborn? You know, it's like you have to have your own way, you know. It's your way or no way at all. You know, and it's hard to work with people that are stubborn because they're not open-minded, you know. And so the people were stubborn and they weren't ready to listen, to turn away and listen. And so it's kind of hard for Ezekiel, you know. He had to be a patient man to work with these people, you know, because he couldn't lose his temper or anything like that. You know, he represents God. So it took a while, but, you know, he worked with them. And he told them, your God is speaking. He wants to talk to you. He wants to give you this message. But listen, open your hearts, open your minds, you know, don't be stubborn, you know. But he knew some people would accept it and some people would not, you know. And that's how it is. Some people will accept what you're saying, some people may not accept your thing. But all, you know, at least a few got it. And you're not lost at all then. You know, you didn't lose at all because some people got it. And they wouldn't know who the real prophet was. The real prophet is God. He came, you know, regardless what they felt. And so he says, open your heart to so you can love. Open your ears so you can hear his voice. And that's where we're being told, to open our hearts for God's love, for his words. Open our ears to hear his voice, to do what he says, you know. And if we make mistakes, it's okay. Say you're sorry and keep trying again. But the idea is to follow God. Okay, in the Gospel, uh, Jesus tells us about an experience he had, and we will have this same experience. So uh, it's something to warn us, because if it happened to Jesus, it can certainly happen to us. So remember, Jesus is there teaching and telling people about everything. And as he's, wow, this is quite amazing at the insight he has of what everything means and all of that. So they were quite amazed. But then they turned around and said, wait a minute, isn't this the guy that lives down the street? He's the, the carpenter, uh, he's a carpenter's son, isn't he? You know, and they started realizing that he lives in our neighborhood. How, how is this little kid doing all this, you know? And so they're forgetting about who he became and they're remembering who he was, okay? And so uh, they tend not to believe quite fully what he was doing. Well, as we learned in the past, when you get all the non-good -thought, thoughts around, it's harder to do a miracle. So in doing so, he ends up going other places to do most of the miracles and the, and the speaking. He finds in his own town, it doesn't work very well. Uh, 
this will happen to us too. So sometimes you might get it in a smaller way. Uh, let's say sometimes you're with your friends or you're with your uh, family or something, and you might do good things, and they don't say nothing. You do it somewhere else, and they go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they make a big deal out of it. And you're like, oh, see, <laughs> it's nice, right? Well, don't get discouraged because if they, anybody forgets to say thank you, God will reward you, okay? Yeah, but if somebody says thank you, you just got pain, okay? So you've got that little bit of, oh, thank you, you, you know, and so you got pain. So the key is, is it's okay not for anybody to say that, but we want to show you that you will have the same experience uh, like Jesus did. For instance, myself, uh, I was going to church, and as we, uh, as a family going to church, I opened the door for my mom, dad, brothers, and sisters, and they never said anything. They just opened the door, and it was like normal, okay? Okay, that's fine. Uh, then one time, this old lady, she's walking really slow, and she's going along here like this, and taking forever to get to the door, and she just don't walk very fast. I open the door for her, and they come out, and she goes, Oh, you're such an angel. You're such a beautiful person. God bless you. And she's going all crazy. And I was like, oh, my goodness. All I did was open the door, right? But sometimes the people you know kind of, oh, that's, you know, no big deal. And then some stranger you do it to, and they go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly what happened to Jesus. So this will happen to us. But keep in mind, that's okay. Because anybody who doesn't say thank you, God will reward you. So he lets us know that this is something that is going to happen to us throughout our life. Okay? So try not to get mad at people when they don't say thank you or don't recognize things you do. It's okay to do it. Nobody says anything. Who knows? That's right. And he'll pay you. So keep that in mind as we continue on. Okay, we have saints. Okay. Okay. Here we go, saints. Here we go. Okay, July 4th, we celebrate the Saint Elizabeth of Portugal. She was, died in 1336. She was well known in Portugal. She was canonized in 1625. Saint Elizabeth married when she was 12 years old. She always kept peace in the family. She wanted peace in the world. She was known for her prayer and kindness and helping the poor. She built hospitals, orphanages, and shelters for travelers. And after her husband died, she joined the monastery of the poor Clares. Okay? On July 5th, we celebrate St. Anthony, Mary Zechariah. He was a priest. He was died in 1539, and he was well known in Italy. He was canonized in 1897. He was a doctor. He healed bodies and souls. At 26 years old, he became a priest. He, pre he preached in churches and at the street corners. And he was a Barna Barnabite, okay? And then on July 6th is St. Maria Goretti. She's a virgin and a martyr. She died in 1902. She was well known in Italy. She was canonized in 1950. She's a patron saint for youth, teenage girls. She was born from poor parents and she lived in a farm. They lost the farm, so they had to work with other farmers. She was a cook, she could sew, and she kept house when she was 11, nine years old. And she had a deep love for God and faith. And she always found joy in all her hardships. Okay? So those are the saints for the week. Okay? Now we're going to do Okay, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, 
It was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified down and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life for the lasting. Amen. Amen. Okay. And now we'll do the we'll do now the prayers of the faithful. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis, for bishops, priests, and deacons, religious and all who serve the people of God in love and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parents and family members who love us and care for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishioners who may be sick or alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for anything you think of, uh, whether you're in the car, riding your bike, or outside or inside, uh, wherever you are. If you see or uh, hear of someone who needs a prayer, just simply say it to yourself quietly. We ask the Lord to hear that prayer and answer it as quickly as possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Right. It was so nice to see you. We look forward to seeing you. We hope you have a well pleasant summer vacation. We look forward to you coming back in two months, okay? Bye, good to see you. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again. Bye-bye. I believe upon the cross, I save you and I keep.